So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Chief Scout Silver Award, which you can earn while you are a Cub Scout in the Scout Association in the UK. Um, this is one of the mid-level awards for the Chief Scouts series of awards, and it's con it is considered the top award in the Cubs section of scouting. So for any uh, leaders or parents or uh, Cub Scouts out there listening, um, this is the award that you want to try and achieve. Um, when you, by the time you leave uh, Cub Scouting um, and go up to being a uh, full scout um, or if you're a leader uh, listening to this uh, basically you want to try and get your young people to achieve this uh, before they leave because uh, it's a good, a good test for uh, being able to show that they have um, a wide sort of variety of skills and they've learned a lot as a Cub they've had a full experience uh, additionally, because uh, they get to wear this uh, silver award on their scout uniform, um, so it's actually a very good uh, symbol and a signal that that's what they've done uh, in, in the section there. Uh, so the requirements here are, are very similar to the other uh, series of Chief Scouts awards, that being the uh, Chief Scouts Bronze Award from uh, Beaver, Beaver Scouts, the previous uh, section and the Chief Scouts Gold Awards which you can earn in the, uh, the Scout section uh, after the Cub Scouts. Um, and they will have the very similar sort of system of challenge badges required to uh, be earned before earning the actual uh, Chief Scouts Silver Award here. Uh, there are, are a couple more present, uh, one or two from the preceding award which is the Chief Scouts Bronze Award. And of course you have to also complete a number of staged or activity badges which we'll cover later but essentially these are those circular badges that you wear on your left arm uh, that you earn from a night or two of, of uh, some experiences and obviously why do we do this it's to help build that sort of team working uh, team leader as it says there spirit of being able to be a leader and to work well on the team um, underneath the leader uh, there are a number of different outdoor um, spirits I've been adventurous there, uh, that being the our world, our outdoors, our, our adventure, and of course, you know, a, num a number of different uh, points on independence and, and skills development. Uh, so, being able to to work independently of, of you know um, more senior people and to be self reliant and self a self starter essentially. And these are all the different awards you may see on various different Cub Scout uniforms. You have to earn all of these uh, before you're able to be eligible for the, the Chief Scouts Silver Award. Um, they look very similar to awards in the uh, Beaver and Cub Scout sections that are for those particular Chief Scouts awards as well, but the background and colours will be different. We'll be starting with the R World, the R World Challenge, uh, as you can see here. And um, here are some different things that you sort of need to do um, before you're able to earn this challenge award. Um, so as it says here, uh, create a community map. So um, this essentially means you know uh, writing a, on a on a map or building a map of your local community with various different um, sort of local services like the fire station, the police station, uh, other different bits um, that may come up and be useful to know about. Essentially, um, not just for your own purposes, but also so that uh, as as being a, a Cub Scout, you might be out there, um, you know, with with others, other Cub Scouts doing some kind of community engagements and volunteering stuff, and with, with leaders and other people, potentially explorer scouts, um, being able to direct, you know, potentially older people towards a, a shop mobility uh, center or something like that can be quite useful. Uh, and additionally, you know, if someone, if uh, a Cub um, uh, knows where to where to go to the police station and things like that. Uh, then if you know if the parents or whatever at the shops and they, they lose the the, the the cub scout or whatever um, obviously outside of outside of, outside of a scouting event um, then the, the kid knows where to go it's a, it's a nice thing to just make sure that your kids know where to go to uh, in that kind of situation if they don't already uh, number two here uh, as a pack identify and complete an activity that benefits your local community um, so generally we do stuff such as balsam bashing, so if you don't know, balsam is an invasive type of plant that clogs up and destroys the ecology of uh, canals in the UK. And um, that and other similar things we tend to promote um, in scouting as it's good to be um, you know, a, positive, a positive influence in the community and to try and foster that in the young people so that when they grow up and become adults uh, they're also inclined to 
but rather than be selfish, to be more selfless and to think more about uh, the community around them as well as themselves. Uh, number three there is to take part in act of worship, reflection and celebration. Um, so scouting used to be a Christian organisation but now it is non, sort of, uh, it's a secular te technically an organisation is that uh, regardless of your, your faith or belief or if you have no faith or belief anyone is allowed to uh, be a, become a scout essentially. Um, instead of any particular uh, religion um, we follow the scout law and there's various different scout promises that are based on uh, religions that vary by religion um, but essentially it boils down to just being trustworthy being a good person, uh, there's nothing particularly, you know, uh, one way or the other in that. Um, but we do promote people to explore their own, their faiths and their beliefs, and to sort of uh, celebrate that in their own ways. Um, so there are various different badges in relation to uh, learning about your culture and your uh, your uh, beliefs and your faith, or other people's beliefs and faiths. Um, so as long as there is some kind of um, reflection there, uh, going to a Christmas event potentially, something like that. Or if you're uh, you're an atheist or you have no particular faith, then just reflection, just you know, looking around the different faiths and, and maybe just your values as a humanist um, is, is what would count for that essentially. And number four there, find out about a faith or a culture you're not familiar with. So as we say there, uh, visiting a church, visiting a mosque, um, or other things like that or just a cultural centre in your local community, so it doesn't have to be something particularly about the faith, there might be a, you know, a shop or uh, some other kind of um, establishment there which is focused around a particular nationality or a culture, and uh, you know, going there with with a parent or with uh, anybody else, uh, you know, a scout leader potentially, um, and so learning about that is could be quite important, uh, especially nowadays with Ukraine and all that kind of stuff, there's lots of opportunities out there. Um, Number five, um, talk about time where you did your best. So one of the um, overriding principles of scouting is to always do your best, always try to strive for your best. Um, when whatever that means to you is correct, basically, uh, as long as you always make sure you're trying to be the best version of yourself. Um, and that's why we have you know the, the good promise and law, um, which sort of reinforces that. And you can look up online what specifically the the law and, and the promises are, and um, sort of the, the values in there that we try to instill. Uh, so number six there, uh, take part in activity about the environment. So as we, as we said, the, that might overlap with an earlier one there with balls and bashing and things like that. Um, but you know, it can be anything about the environment. Um, it can be just learning about, um, you know, the roles of different uh, creatures in local ecology and the environment around, about why we have, you know, uh, birds of prey, things like that, or the usefulness of rabbits in an ecosystem, uh, and things that are actually useful to know about why um, the world around you works the way it does. Or just, you know, about environmental activism and about why, um, you know, the, the rainforests are being cut down in various different places and why it matters, potentially. Um, number seven there, um, play a game with cubs that, you know, but folks sit around a different country and their promise. Um, so again, this this is about that sort of um, interfaith, intercultural, uh, but sort of uh, ideals we carry within scouting. And there's a concept in scouting known as world scouting, which is the fact that um, scouting is the biggest youth organisation in the world, the biggest youth movement in the world, I should say. Um, and there'll be plenty of opportunities in scouting for people to young people to visit things called jamborees, for example. Uh, which is where scouts from across the world come together somewhere and sort of have a cultural exchange and, and participate in, in adventurous activities together and it helps broaden the horizons a bit um, and sort of show that there is more to, there's more out there in the world and more people are um, people from different cultures have their own their own beliefs their own uh, values uh, and backgrounds and things and histories and it's very useful for that and it helps people also recognize their own culture and uh, their own sort of background and, and why all that matters as well, it's quite useful there. And uh, number eight, we have the Celebrate a Festival from another country or culture. Um, so there's plenty of different ones out there, plenty of different types of, you know, we do Chinese New Year, all different kinds of things. Um, but it's again about broadening horizons and realising that, you know, being aware of these certain cultural uh, customs and things like that, Hanukkah or whatever. Um, and 
the reason why that is useful because in life people may encounter young people or adults eventually will uh, encounter people from different cultures, the cultural backgrounds, different faiths, different um, sort of backgrounds of them and having a little bit of an idea about their particular uh, view on life can be very very useful if just for making conversation. Uh, next we have the uh, skills challenge which obviously is um, quite a lot so apologies for the small text here uh, but essentially it boils down to uh, trying out a number of new sports or physical activities uh, so it may be the case that someone is very very into football and that's all that they've ever really done and school maybe has done rugby with them and it's about understanding that there is a number of different things out there that may not have been tried that you may actually enjoy and perhaps even be good at so um, tai Chi there, for example, martial arts is, is useful, um, it's useful a lot, P young people are uh, um, sort of shied away from martial arts by parents due to you know, protective instincts and things like that, but in reality starting off your, your child in a martial art, or at least having them try it, can be very useful for later in life, uh, you know, there'd be certain circumstances where you may just run into, run into some kind of bad situation and uh, having that in the, in the back pocket can be very useful. Um, and there's some other things as well, you know, like Choir, or well, the choir wouldn't count here, but dancing, you know, basketball, uh, tennis, badminton's a good one. Badminton's good. So, if someone's never done really a racket sport before, that can be useful to try and try and show them. Uh, number two here, we have uh, take part in three activities to help you be healthy. Um, so this comes down to, as it says there, healthy eating, exercise, learning about biology, or something else. And again, it's this it's promoting this. Um, this healthy lifestyle, because uh, youth obesity in the UK is quite a big issue, and a lot of it is just down to the lack of awareness and things like that. So, um, or, or other issues, you know, sometimes there could be children who have developed you know, a gaming addiction uh, at a young age due to handheld devices or, or, or screens or TV, whatever the case might be, and um, helping them to develop positive uh, habits and things like that before it becomes an issue. Uh, perhaps later on, when they become a scout, for example, they might get very heavily into gaming, um, computer games and things like that, then this is a good, uh, setting the, the good example earlier, helping, helping parents too, which is nice. Uh, number three here, uh, pick two creative things to try. So this, could, this is very useful because a lot of times children may go to uh, school and that's all they ever go for is just academia. And that's all parents, for example, may ever really bear in mind. But in reality, there's a lot of things out there, not even just writing, uh, sorry, um, you, know, uh, you know, following a play or, or a script or something and dancing and drama and things that schools tend to promote, but also things like creative writing, short stories, or photography. These are all things that are, are useful and engaging for young people a lot of the time, but schools tend not to promote very much. Um, so we try to, to do that to, again, widen experiences of young people there. Number four, apologies again for the small text there, but essentially it just says uh, learn four skills and actually end up using them. Uh, the first one, something I always try to encourage my the young people I, I, I lead and mentor to do is learn how to sew, <laughs> because oftentimes we give uh, the young people badges they've earned and they're ecstatic to get them, um, and they put them in their pockets, give them to their parents, and then there's, they're forgotten about or left or tucked away somewhere. And they don't get that that recognition of achievement within within scouting, of other other scouts from other clubs, for example, going, hey, you've actually earned that. Wow, that's pretty cool. How would you do that? And then, you know, they're they're missing out there. And being able to learn how to sew on your own badges saves the parents to doing that, and it also gives them a life skill for for later on because clothing repair is actually quite useful. It happens, you know, especially nowadays where you'll buy a hoodie or a shirt, it'll start fraying at the seam somewhere and you know, you'll pull it and it'll keep on threading on threading and unraveling yourself and that's something that you can fix just a little bit of certain knowledge so um, it's good to, good to start with. And of course you've got some other things there about you know how to lay a table properly, how to peel potatoes, how to, how to use an iron and an ironing board, very very useful things, um, how to clean and tidy a bedroom, other things like that, which are just skills for life that you have to have to learn at some point and you know, scouting helps helps make it easier for parents to teach that to their kids and for the kids to, to understand it, really. And five, um, two problem-solving activities that you haven't done before. So this is trying to develop the resilience, uh, uh, you know, problem-solving and, and encountering problems is something that happens to everybody in life and 
uh, being able to give the young people some experience of uh, getting that frustration, handling it is a big thing. Creative thinking, creatively solving a problem is a, is a big um, a big step. It's one of the reasons why I promote uh, Dungeons and Dragons and things like that to young people as well, because that's essentially all about creatively solving problems and thinking about ways to go about uh, issues to fix them in the most practical way, a pragmatic way. So, very good. Uh, we've got the Outdoor Challenge here, which is the quintessential scouting one of, of going out into the wilderness uh, and being self-reliant away from uh, you know, civilization and um, having that, that backstop of, of picking up the phone and calling mum. You know, it's like that, developing that self-reliance and things. Um, although, of course, we, that being said, we, we do allow scouts and, and cubs and things to, to call mums and dads if they need to, obviously. It's just uh, trying to make sure that they are instantly default onto that, you know what I mean, uh, as some, some children often often do, especially at younger ages. Uh, so number one here, uh, take part in, a, in an activity of these three nights away on camps from pack holidays. Yep, so um, cubs are, unlike beavers, uh, more responsible, at a, a, you know, compared to, in the, to, to beavers in, in the scouting journey, to be able to go on nights away for an extended period of time. Uh, we trust them to, to look after themselves and, and to be able to ask us for help if they need it, um, but also that they can learn how to pitch up their own tents, to make their own sleeping spaces, um, to follow instructions and not hurt themselves, things like that. And, and we obviously keep it a close eye and we be there as mentors and leaders. Um, but also other things such as, um, as it says there in number two, learning how to cook meals um, with your six there. So we actually divide um, the, um, the cub um, the cub pack into a number of different uh, sixes, uh, which give uh, children essentially the, the young people uh, the ability to be a leader uh, for their group of, of six um, of six uh, of six cubs essentially. So you can actually have um, someone distinguish themselves, and then they can help pass on uh, their knowledge and their their skills and their um, ambition uh, and leadership skills onto the other people inside their their six. And obviously, there's some of the things here in terms of the countryside code, uh, which revolves around you know making sure that livestock doesn't escape when you're walking through the countryside, uh, not leaving litter, which is something that you see a lot nowadays on the sides of roads and things, which is just breaks my heart. And it's good to try and instill that early on uh, that it's not okay to litter, especially nowadays with the environment being the way it is. And of course, there's some other things here which are very important as well. Um, such as you know being able to treat minor burns, scalds, cuts and grazes, or make a call to the emergency services. Uh, you know, because for example, there's been a number of different times where um, people who've been in scouting learn how to call the emergency services. As you know, a beaver, for example, they've actually had to be able to call uh, the emergency services for a parent who's actually hurt themselves, uh, or whatever the case might be. And of course, you know, treating mild cuts and grazes is very useful for just uh, general uh, general usage. And um, as they go through the scouting sections, we actually teach them more and more up to the point that they can learn CPR as a scout, um, which has saved uh, you know a handful of lives. Definitely, uh, there's actually yearly um, awards of, of merit and gallantry awards for scouts, and some of those are uh, regularly awarded uh, towards scouts who've helped um, you know older people, adults, or fellow uh, fellow young people in medical situations, which is very useful. Um, so we try and make sure that every scout knows a good amount about those things before they, they leave scouting. So uh, it follows that in, in Cubs we, we teach that too when we can. And number three here, uh, obviously do uh, two act activities while you're away to sort of participate in that sort of outdoor spirit. Um, as it says here, you know, you can build a sim simple gadget like a flagpole, which we try to do a, a flag uh, during uh, a camp, just something to uh, to know where they are visually, things like that, which is useful uh, on, for example, wide games, which if you don't know the term, wide games are essentially um, like a playground game, but with more complex rules and scaled up towards the size of a campsite. It's very useful, lots of running around, lots of exercise, uh, lots of navigation sometimes, very useful, very useful indeed. And of course, cooking a backwards meal is very useful. It's, they tend to be simple meals, but that's what you want to want to learn from a young age, because if you learn how to cook basic meals from a young age, it saves you um, health-wise later on where I know, for example, some people in my life who are 
uh, well into their adulthood and don't know how to cook a meal really for themselves and they just order food in and it's not very good for their health so we try and uh, build that early, build that skill early. Um, we have of course the Our Adventure Challenge which is to do with pushing your boundaries a little bit and being a bit of an adventurous spirit which is always useful because in life, what is life you don't get the most out of it, right? Um, so we start here with uh, number one, uh, taking part in two different adventurous activities. And uh, we try and make sure that it says there that at least one of these is new to the new to the club. And of course, given their clubs, they are able to do more uh, adventurous activities than, for example, beavers, uh, because they're more trustworthy and more mature. Uh, and we, have, we as leaders have good experience as to what, what they can and can't do, essentially. Um, so as it says here, um, we have caving, for example. We have some artificial caves in the UK, which are quite nice, which are essentially converted buses and things. Uh, so it's, there's no risk or danger there. And obviously, uh, in Skyrim, we have, we have copious amounts of, of risk assessments and people on standby and all kinds of, of oversight. So uh, there's nothing, nothing to worry about there as a parent. All this is, is very, very safe. Um, absorbing, fencing. Rafting, rafting is a very good one. Uh, we can actually teach the, the cubs how to make their own raft with, uh, with barrels and logs and things, and they actually lash it themselves. It's very interesting. You may have seen that on some, some um, reality TV shows out there. Uh, that's actually a very interesting skill, as you might have seen on those programs where, uh, or on YouTube videos, uh, where you sort of realize who is a good leader, who is a good um, you know, team worker, and they help, they help build those skills. Actually, you can actually give them a chance to be a leader when they may have ne never had the chance before to be an actual leader outside of you know a sports team or whatever. Um, so it's very important there. And of course, the, the way that these are pushing the boundaries a little bit, there might be a little bit of an element of fear there, potentially a bouldering, you know, climbing up a, a, a wall, uh, even though you know there is of course padding and the safety measures and things like that. Um, that's sort of the height, for example, is a good way of overcoming that fear and things. Uh, number two here, outdoor activities again have a couple of them being new. Um, so there is lighting and making a fire, which is a very, very useful survival skill. Um, you know, obviously nowadays there's less chance of you having to need that skill, uh, but when you're camping or whatever, it's incredibly useful. And if you're ever in a, in a situation where you're stuck somewhere for whatever reason, it's, it's, it's invaluable. Um, and obviously there's some other things here, water games, obstacle courses, tracking. Um, these are all useful outdoor skills, but the main point of them is to just um, get the get the scout get the um, the cub scouts outdoors and to try something new and to get a better appreciation for nature and for for the positive mental health benefits they can they can they can have because uh, you may not know but uh, going out in nature is one of the best things for mental health on the whole there's been studies that reflect that um, so that's one of the reasons why scouting is so important especially nowadays with the, the rising uh, mental health crises that, that we see every day in the, in the papers and things and number three here go on a hike or follow a trail. Um, this is, you know, very, very useful because get, not getting lost is a very important skill, even for people who live in towns and cities. Being able to follow a trail, um, you know, it, it, it follows with similar skills to being able to follow road signs and uh, know how to cross the road correctly and things like that. But also, you know, going on a hike is about having the determination and the, um, the ability to, to keep pushing yourself and to want to go further and take fewer and fewer breaks. Um, so it's it's building that resilience in your age. And number four here we have uh, prepare for your activities and hikes. So this is that self reliance, that uh, independence basically that, that we're trying to to foster. Because at the age of being a cub and into going into you know the start of scouts, um, you're no longer sort of uh, a helpless helpless young person. I mean, not you're not a beaver. You are able to go on hikes and you're able to understand that you should bring waterproofs when you're going somewhere cold or somewhere wet, that you should, you know, bring a sleeping bag that is, you know, uh, protecting yourself from the cold and whatever the case might be. Uh, you should be wise enough to bring your own water bottle and a snack and things like that. It's nothing too, too incredibly um, hard to do um, and, you know, it's not as, um, as adventurous as the stuff we do in the scout section. But it's starting to, to sort of bring that independent spirit because eventually the young people are going to have to go off to college or university potentially and being able to have that self-awareness, that where, wherewithal to know what is and is, isn't required somewhere is, is very useful to start fostering. Uh, of course.
course, we have the teamwork challenge. Um, this is, of course, one of the most important life skills you can have is how to work in a team. This applies everywhere, uh, especially in the workplace. So building that early is very important. So this is pretty simple. Um, basically, it's just being able to uh, follow instructions, uh, be a good team player, and don't have tantrums, um, or know how to handle your emotions if you lose, etc. Um, being in different teams in different roles, so being flexible and adapting to situations, um, and other things of that nature, and do something positive basically in, in that role. Very simple, but very useful. And this is the new one uh, that is actually, I think this is distinct from the uh, Beavers Bronze, uh, Bronze Chief Scouts Award, because they're a little bit older now, we can push them more towards being team leaders and developing that leadership skills. Uh, which is very, very important for, for later in life. Um, and obviously here it is essentially leading um, your your group, your uh, your six other or six uh, uh, Cub Scouts that, that are in your team um, towards completing activity. This can really be anything. It doesn't have to be a, a game. It can be you know, tying knots or making something. Um, very, very useful. Um, help a new Cub. So being a leader also means being a mentor. Uh, there's a difference between being a boss and being a leader in the workplace is, is knowing when to help somebody else. Um, so it's very, very good to learn. And of course, um, you know, teaching other people that sort of mentoring and that ability to, to pass on and sort of come, get from where they're coming from, empathize a bit, and to pass that, that skill on is, is, is useful, very useful. And this is one of the more important ones here, the personal challenge. Um, so this is quite unique in the fact that um, it's about having self-reflection, self-awareness to know where your flaws are or your weaknesses are and, and to build upon those. So if you're particularly athletic but not particularly academically inclined, uh, then it's, it's a, a way to challenge yourself to, to fix that. Or for example, if you are very academically inclined but not so much towards social aspects of life, and that also counts there, and try and build up on the social abilities. And of course, if someone's not as creative as they might be, because in school, we tend to, um, in, in schools, they tend, they tend to sort of devalue creativity. There's less creative writing and things like that than there probably should be, I think. Um, so it follows there, basically, you, you have these two different personal challenges that you agree with your leader, they're customized and tailored to you, um, and they have to show that you've, you've had that self-reflection and that wherewithal to sort of dedicate yourself to fixing or, or improving a part of, of, of those weaknesses, essentially. Um, and this is something that even a lot of adults uh, refuse to do, is have this sort of self-reflection and be you know, conscious that they have maybe a temper or whatever. And it's just sort of a very easy sort of starting to sort of go, okay, you can actually sort of evaluate yourself from an objective standpoint and sort of realize um, Know, ways you can change that. Um, so obviously there are some things here, you know, if you're not very social as a person or not very empathetic, then uh, helping to care for, uh, for a new cub uh, for half a term, just sort of help mentor them and sort of make them feel welcome. Um, some other things here, people who are not academically inclined might go for, uh, you know, learning new topics every week and just talking to adults for 10 minutes or five minutes about them. And, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, are, um, Maybe a little bit disruptive in the classroom or whatever. They can they can try to be um, good behaviour at clubs, for example, and uh, you know other bits and pieces. Uh, one of the ones here to mention is the trial food in a club camp, um, because generally uh, I think nowadays it's an issue where people aren't eating very healthily because they're not being pushed towards uh, trying a variety of different foods. And obviously, having a big variety of foods helps with your diet immensely. Um, so there's not being a picky eater is one of those things as well. And of course, uh, as we saw earlier, uh, one of the requirements for the Chief Scout Silver Award is to complete a number of um, staged or activity badges. Uh, I've tried to fit all of them on here, I think I've got them all. Uh, but essentially the blue ones here are the ones that persist and sort of go higher and higher in their grades throughout scouting. So if you learn a little bit of emergency aid, as you can see there on the top right, um, in beavers you can do a little bit more in cubs get to level 2 and do a little bit more in scouts and get level 3 for example. 
but of course they have the uh, ones with the red background which are um, essentially uh, different various activities that they can do and learn. Uh, there's martial arts there, there is local knowledge, global issues, money skills, it's a very very useful one. Uh, money skills is one of the new ones and is um, essentially um, teaching the kids about you know uh, current accounts and why money is important and savings and um, you know all that kind of stuff, very useful things that uh, help them get ahead in life. Uh, but of course you've got scientist badge, pioneer badge, uh, world faiths, uh, other bits and pieces, DIY, we try to um, promote essentially. And of course uh, you know, th there's a couple of others here that are worth mentioning. The Activity Plus badge is something we rarely see but essentially if someone is uh, perhaps very very into um, book reading or being a chef or whatever or being a collector they can actually complete their Activity badge and then get the Activity Plus version of that badge to show that they have an even greater understanding. Um, I hope that's been quite um, valuable insight into the Chief Scout Silver Award and what it's all about and um, have a great night.